What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and it's time for us to stomach our vomit talk about the Halo show. I have watched and reviewed every single painstaking episode on this channel, and it was a straight-up miracle I was able to keep watching. After the first season of the Halo live adaptation, I was contemplating just turning off my TV and canceling my Paramount account altogether. I never once imagined I'd see Master Chief's face being shown to me in the very first episode of the show, let alone see him getting naked and having sex with a Covenant spy. It has broken me to my core, and it legit made me wonder if Microsoft actually cares about Halo, or if they just want to make fun of the series for some reason. I honestly felt this was a spoof or a joke show just to make us laugh or probably cry. But with the new season arriving this week, I wanted to think about whether Season 2 could actually somehow, someway, crawl its ass out of the fire and make it a viable show going forward. Or more likely, this show will cave and just become another failed attempt at a gaming adaptation to add to the dumpster. So it's my job to give my predictions on what will happen with this season, as well as give my utmost hopes of what the show will do this coming week. I'm talking story plots, I'm talking characters, I'm talking about how many times Chief takes off his helmet. Does Halo TV show season two have a chance? What would need to happen to save this show from crumbling? Let's count how often Chief shows his cheeks, get naked with some aliens, and take off our helmet right into this. And I wanna start off with my predictions. And what I mean by this is what I think will actually happen with the show. And I'll start off with the narrative. The story is pretty much going to revolve around the fall of Reach. Seeing pretty much everyone getting destroyed around us with the invasion of the Covenant will pretty much be guaranteed. We've already seen this with mounds of posters and trailers giving us a basic doomsday feel of everything just being destroyed around us. What I feel it might be somewhat of a surprise is that we might get some more backstory into Silver Team. There were some scenes in the trailers that actually show that there were some hints or callbacks to the Fall Reach book, which was a fantastic story about how John and Silver Team kind of formed together to become one unit. And granted, when I say Silver Team, I do mean the original Blue Team from the book. Now granted, if they actually do follow this storyline and kind of tell a story of how did this team come together, how did they become best friends, and how they grew up together becoming Spartans, then I think that might be a very interesting take to see, especially with how bad first season's backstory was. By the time we get the invasion from the Covenant, we will see a full action mode of the show, which will see a lot of fights, a lot of tense situations, and I'll be all for it. I feel like they did somewhat confirm that there will be a war feel to the season, because you saw people like Pablo Shriver, as well as many others, say that this show will have a completely different feel compared to what Season 1 had did. So you mean it won't be complete trash? Because remember, Season 1 was essentially going to be an emotional ride between all these Spartans, feeling like they had to give so much emotion and be opposite of what people wanted them to be, kind of became more like a joke, rather than actually show emotions of war and conflicts of soldiers. I have a strong feeling that they will be giving us some aspects of the Covenant, but I don't think it will go as far as what people may think. I know they did mention there will be some sort of politicking happening with inside the Covenant, and that will be kind of a side plot that they have going forward, but they did do that last time, but it was just completely horrible. They also mentioned that there will be a sort of Arbiter character that will be involved in this season, and it will be considered to be the antagonist that we will fight in this entire show. Now, let me be clear, I do not think that this is going to be the same Arbiter that we know and love from the games. They made it seem like this Arbiter is someone that is fighting for their religious causes rather than being an actual position of a holy warrior that is basically sent on suicide missions. We may not get Velvadom, which is the original Arbiter from the games. Now remember, in the lore of the Arbiter, there were many different Arbiters that were around for many years. Each one had its own purpose and had their own kind of mentalities going forward of how can they further the Covenant. We saw an Arbiter during the Halo Wars, there was also other Arbiters that were discussed in previous stories, and Velvadam was the Arbiter that took the mantle after Halo 1 had ended. So is it possible that we could have an Arbiter that we face in this show, and then when that character dies, then we get introduced to Velvadamine? Sure, I don't think it's out of the blue, but I really would be surprised if the showrunners actually did something that the fans want to see. James Ackerson is confirmed, which is now an introduced new character to the series that was from the lore, and Ackerson is basically a member of Oni who was a rival to Halsey from the very beginning, and he was actually trying to develop his own versions of Spartans, which eventually became Spartan 3s. It was basically his vision how the Spartan program could be seen or envisioned going forward. He felt like they were better adapted versions of the Spartans, while Spartan 2s were more kind of drastic. And he even kind of set the stage for how Spartan 4s would be looked at in Halo 4 and beyond. So him being involved in this way is actually a really good thing. 
in my opinion. I'm expecting to see a lot of Spartan 3s in the background of the Spartan 3 program and even showing some sort of conflicts that can be mounted between these two type of Spartan programs that are happening at the same time. I would like to see this new introduction of Spartan 3s and they should be introduced in the first episode. I think when I'm looking at the straight up plot, it's not gonna to be too complicated. I think my predictions is gonna be straight up simple. The fact that you're going to have a general plot that's, that we will get some side missions to try to figure out why the Comforter are doing what they're doing and what's their main goal. But internally, we're gonna get some fights between Oni and UNSC. We're gonna see Chief kind of going head to head with Ackerson a little bit. We're also gonna see some internal fighting happening between Halsey and Ackerson because they're already rivals at this point. And then when the Covenant finally arrives, we're gonna get a quick guide of how this politics works between the Covenant characters. And then when they actually are invading, it's gonna get all hell breaks loose and we're gonna get some straight up conflict and war. Now, eventually, I think we will get destruction to reach with some characters being killed off whether that's going to be members of silver team which i would be very surprised but i could see happening or we get introduced to a whole new set of spartan threes and we see them basically get introduced in this season and then all die by the end there were some episode titles that were shown off with some background on the episodes and it seems as though with the second to last episode being called thermopylae I have a feeling that's where a lot of Spartans are going to die. And remember, this is not really a spoiler because at the end of the day, the Spartan program was seen as a way to combat against human insurrection. But with Reach being invaded by the Covenant, this was the time where most Spartans are killed. And it all leads to the final episode, which is called Halo, in which I think that the last scene that you see from like Halo Reach is going to be very similar to what we see in this type of show, where they ha might have the Spartan 3s Kind of take the stand to kind of defend to allow for master chief to get on the pillar of autumn and then escape to the halo room. the only question i do have though is whether or not silver team will be on the ship with chief or will they stay behind and basically help defend now we do know even in the books and in this other stories Blue team doesn't die on reach. They do get away, but they did stay and fight while Chief did get on the Pillar of Autumn with Cortana and get away. So they might follow that same story and then maybe in season three, if the show is still around, they might continue the other Spartan stories that are continuing reach and beyond while Chief is going to be continuing the story from Halo 1 supposedly. Now with my predictions out of the way, I'm going to talk about the hopes and this is really about how can they possibly fix this story going forward? And to be honest with you, I don't think it's that complicated. One of the easiest things you could do to make this season very successful is to stick to the story of the fall of reach and if you do this as closely as possible people are going to love it i've been a fan of halo for such a long time and when you just tell the story of why master chief is the way he is why he is a machine when he's supposed to be human as well then i think you're going to tell a great story and it's already confirmed that they are throwing away a lot of the plots from season one because they just saw how stupid this was, I think that's already a great start. I think you need to dive in, especially in the beginning episodes of the season, into the background to the Spartan program to basically tell people the story of Master Chief, how he started, and if you need some, really some inspiration, look to the book, The Fall of Reach. It does a perfect job of explaining the background of the Master Chief and his squad, and then tells you why he is the way he is. And then when you get, finally get to the actual conflict that happens on a Reach, then you can understand why he acts the way he does, especially with these emotions that, that do kind of fling out at times. But most often, he tries to stay as close to being a machine as possible. And if you do this, you're not only going to be telling a great story, but you're also going to tell all the fans out there that say, hey, we listen to you. We are trying to fix the story in the right way. And we're actually going to give Master Chief some real character development and not make him look like complete trash. Now, granted, I know that Pablo Shriver needs to show his face every other day. And I think at this point, I've already accepted that as a fact that he's just will always do that. But if you can make Master Chief become a viable character again in this show, then it just makes me intrigued to watch it some more. The more you make me hate the main character, the less likely of a chance that I'm going to stick around and keep watching. And my hopes is that you need to include those antagonists that are feel more viable and actually feel like an actual group of people or aliens that make sense to be villains. In the first season, we were just throwing some 
random villains like Vanek or other crazy ass people that make zero sense. And a lot of times, like I would just look at what like when Quan was introduced to a story or her whole story plot with the rebels, it just made me not want to watch the show. It made me want to turn it off and just skip a week because it turned like it was like a filler episode. And there's no reason to do that. If you have aliens that are good villains, you have Ackerson, who's a good villain. You have these storylines that revolve around these villains and protagonists, then I'm going to be excited to watch. I can already tell you right away if I see Quan in this show, which I know I will, any story plot with her involved in the, the rebels or, or Soren's mutinies, I, I would, I am already going to be upset at that part. So if you could make those scenes as short as possible and have us be really back to the main conflict as much as possible, then I will probably be a little bit more happy with this. I think that this whole season needs to revolve around the basically the development of the backstory of this show as well as giving us something to be intrigued about going forward. You need to tell us the politics between the prophets, the elites, and the other alien races in the Covenant. You need to give us characters in the Covenant that make us feel like, wow, this guy's a badass, whether he's a bad guy, whether he's an anti-hero, whatever it may be. You need to give us more backstory on the Spartan program to explain why the Master Chief is the way he is. And if you were able to do this and you introduce these characters in the right way, then you can do something that not even the games did. If you can go into Velvatamine and his backstory in the Halo Reach storyline, then you would have done something that no game has ever done. And that would be give those antagonists backstory to explain why they are the way they are. And I feel like if you do that, then a lot of fans will be happy to keep watching including me. So at this point, I've only felt anger at the show, but give us some story writing that is unique. Tell the story of games that, that are the most important and just, in my opinion, make this feel like a war. Reach is one of the most important stories to tell in this franchise, and if you do it well, you'll get more people excited for this project. Halo show still has a chance to give us something that isn't complete trash, but we really won't know until they just write Chief in a way that isn't straight up embarrassing. But are you excited for the Halo TV show season two? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.